Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all of you. I want to thank you for joining the Spiritus Talk series promoted by the United States Spiritus Federation every Saturday morning, 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Today, I am so very happy to be here as your host and welcome Luis Lima, who will be leading our discussion today on the truth will set you free. I want to take a moment, if you don't mind, Louise, to remind everyone here that uh, we have a course uh, called the Initiation into Spiritism. This is a virtual course with a new lesson uh, that is released every week on Sundays. They are available free of charge for you to, to look at it afterwards. But uh, tomorrow at 10 a.m., a new lesson will be released. This class, this course is meant to anyone, but especially for those who would like to learn or review the basic principles of spiritism as it was first published by Alan Kardec in 1857. Just as a summary, this is a self-paced class. It has 30 lessons. In addition to those 30 lessons, we have scheduled eight interactive live Q&A sessions. Those lessons are released weekly on Sundays, as I mentioned before, at 10 a.m. Eastern. If you're interested or if you know anyone who could benefit from this course, take a moment. Please visit the course page, which is housed at the U.S. Spiritus Federation website. And um, you can have access to all the past classes or you can receive reminders for the future classes by email. Tomorrow, uh, Sunday May 22nd, the lesson will be on trials and atonements. Finally, I don't know if you've noticed, but uh, in the past live talk series, we have a QR, QR code. And uh, we just say, if you enjoy this series that we're doing today, the live talks, and if you're able to, please take a moment to donate so we can develop new classes. We really appreciate you scanning the QR code on screen, and that will lead us to produce future publications to uh, really promote spiritism to you, to me, and everyone. Now, back to Louise. Louise, it's so, so, so good to have you with us today. I want to extend a very warm welcome along with all of you who are here today. We all hope that you're doing well. It is really good to have you here with us today. I understand, Louise, that today uh, you will have a, a talk, a discussion that will focus on really understanding what Jesus meant by saying, the truth will set you free. What did he really mean by that? What did he want to teach us when he said that? Well, stay tuned. Louise will explore not only what he meant, what we need to understand, but the mechanics behind two things, knowing, but also valuing the truth that will eventually lead all of us to a life that is full of emotional and spiritual abundance. Wow, I really look forward to your words, Louise. I am sure, like me, you are all eager and uh, want to hear his words, his explanations. But before Louise can start to engage us in this discussion, in this, uh, let's say, 30, 45 minutes, please let me formally introduce Luis to you who may not know him. So who is Luis? Luis Lima uh, is here with us today and he has begun his own journey into understanding and learning, embarking into the concept of spiritism since 1990. As a serious researcher on the scientific aspect of spiritism, Louise has been providing all of us with amazing studies of how to bridge science and spiritism in Portuguese as well, as today uh, in English. Mr. Lima is renowned 
for his lectures in the Spiritist movement, and he has participated in local as well as uh, national seminars and events throughout the year. Right, Luis? Professionally, Luis holds a degree in electronics engineering, and he works in the computer network industry. Final reminder, everyone, please, as you listen to Luis, send your questions. You can use the chat window. Luis will reserve time to address your comments and or questions once he concludes his presentation. Now, Luis, please take it away. Hi, Marcia. Thank you so much for having me today. Uh, thanks for you following us here live and even after the fact. So the topic is, is uh, for me personally, it was very challenging in the beginning when I started my journey in spiritism, when Jesus said, you know, know the truth and the truth will set you free. And I go like, hmm, should I scratch my head? This is not making sense to me. It's it's vague. I need something more, uh, per se, black and white. So uh, I, I, I set my own avenue on researching this. And uh, it, it led me through several different pieces of the puzzle. So that's what I wanted to bring to you today. And we're going to kick off by using two sources. Okay, One of them is when Jesus actually says the phrase, so he, is, uh, he has some Jews with him. The Jews were already following him. They, were, they already believed in what he was uh, saying. But then he goes back to these Jews and he says, if you hold to my teachings, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Well, let's go back in time, 2,000 or so years ago. How many of those Jews understood what he said? Know the truth, and the truth will set you free. I'm not sure, but I, I, you know, from what we know about uh, 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 Jesus' life, not everybody would understand that. Not at the time. And maybe even several years and decades later, uh, and a thousand years later, and still today, it is challenging for some people. What changes, I think, is uh, the arrival of uh, Spiritism, this promised consoler that will explain in details, in depth, what Jesus was trying to say. So when we go to Spiritism to research what that all means, we come across right in the first book, uh, the Spirit's book, we come across question 115. So this is uh, a, a book where Alan Kardec is placing the questions towards the highly evolved spirits and they will respond to us. And because they are highly evolved spirits in the discarnate world, their answer is at least one layer above ours. We got to make that sure. So the question is about, you know, are all spirits created equal or some are good, some are evil? That's the question is around that. And the spirits will answer. The detail is within the words. So let's go easily here. God has created all spirits simple and ignorant, meaning without knowledge. So the word knowledge appears right here. So everybody starts from the get-go to the same point, simple and ignorant. The phrase continues. God has given each one of them a mission that is aimed at enlightening them, so there's a goal here, enlightening them, and progressively leading them toward perfection. Progressively, there is no snap of fingers. Progressively requires effort, it requires work. Leading them towards perfection through, and now he's going to tell us the method, through knowledge of the truth. So the knowledge of the truth becomes this tool, knowing the truth becomes this tool to reach perfection. And Spiritism is going to explain to us how that happens, what's behind the scenes in this method, how do we achieve knowledge of the truth, what it exactly means. So we have some words that we need to tackle first. One of them is the word truth. 
in this sentence, the knowledge of the truth. The word truth is used in the sense of a, a, a reference, but with authority. It's a reference. Knowledge of the truth. So where do I seek the truth? In the reference. Where is this reference? We're going to go through this. But that's the meaning of the word truth. There's a reference, and that reference comes with authority. And we need to be able to reach that reference to get to know what truth is. So, for example, in the codification, the spiritist works, when we refer to, Alan Kardec did that, by the way, uh, a spirit of the truth, spirit of truth, it means exactly that, a highly evolved spirit that will bring to us the reference. So that's the general sense of the word truth. So if we go back to the phrase, there is the spirits mentioned about progressively, progressive knowledge. So we start from no knowledge, they call simple and ignorant, and there's progressive knowledge. So what does it mean? A little bit at a time, more today than yesterday, and so and so and so, and throughout different experiences, we will get uh, or acquire or gather more knowledge. Just like our uh, lifetime here. We start as kids, as young uh, uh, babies and infants, and so we acquire knowledge to a point that we become adults with a lot more knowledge than when we were kids. So it carries the same uh, uh, concept. It's a little bit at a time. And that's the interesting thing. A little bit of, of a time here means several different lifetimes, several different incarnations. So each incarnate at each incarnation, we are learning more than the previous one. So to the point that we can say for all of us, no exception, this is the better life ever. This is our better incarnation ever in terms of getting to knowledge, getting to know the truth through knowledge. So a little bit at a time. Now, we can conclude something interesting here. If there are several different lifetimes, several different incarnations, at a given point, at a given point, I have a certain knowledge. Think about an amount of knowledge, if you will. For me, at that time, and for all of us, we believe that that Knowledge is the truth. So, for example, let's just say 300 lives ago, I thought that what I knew was the truth. 300 lives after, on this one, I still think I know what I know is the truth. But the truth that I believe that I know today is not the same I had 300 lives ago. So how come the truth changes? How come truth is not a moving target? So you see, we're getting to dig into the words to understand what Jesus was saying. Because the truth, the absolute truth cannot be changed. If I'm changing the truth, I'm trying to rule the world by establishing what the truth is. And I establish what the truth is, I tell you what it is, and I kind of, in quotes, dethrone God from establishing the absolute truth. And doing this leans more towards simple and ignorant than towards perfection. So the more I try to establish the truth, the more I try to rule the world, the more simple and ignorant I am. If you, if you put it this way, and less perfect I am. So the knowledge will be, I will be gathering knowledge. But if I believe that what I know today is the absolute truth, that's impeding me from, from getting better. That, that goes against myself. So those who establish the truth every day by doing this is what it is and you're wrong and I'm right. Those who do this every day believe they have reached perfection. 
and that's not necessarily the truth. So truth is not what I say it is. Truth is not what I declare the truth to be. Truth is not determined by the things I want them to be like. It's not determined uh, uh, by the way I portray life to be. That truth, folks, that truth is nothing more than my personal opinion. It's just my opinion, and my opinion changes. 300 lives ago, I had different opinions about a lot of things. My knowledge today compared to that lifetime, 300 lifetimes ago, my knowledge is better today. So my opinion is different. Still doesn't mean I know the truth altogether, but truth changes. You see, why, why does it change? I think that's that's what got me personally when I was going through understanding what Jesus meant here. Because we consider truth to be, uh, uh, because our opinion is considered by ourselves to be our truth, but it's not, it's just my personal truth. That cannot, truth cannot be based on selfishness, selfishness and pride. And that's what personal interests are based in. So if what I think is true is my personal truth, it is based on my degrees of selfishness and pride. And then my truth becomes a moving target. So we have double standards. We have favoritisms. And if we look into just a parenthesis here, if we look into what science has been discovering and studying through quantum mechanics and quantum physics, we know that the truth is nothing more than one possibility. You see, the truth, that's quantum physics, right? The truth depends on the observer. So you and I, we look at the same event, it could be anything. It could be a person walking down the street and I have an opinion about it. You have a different opinion. It could be a, 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 a tennis game where I think the ball hit outside the court, you hit inside and we were at the stadium at the same time looking at it. See, this is all because it depends on the observer. And the observer of our lives is ourselves. So my truth carries in it the fact that I am the observer and it isn't the absolutely truth. It's just my opinion. And that's not what Jesus is talking about. He's not talking about personal truth. He's not talking about moving targets. He's not talking about any of that because those, like I said, they are based and supported by our degree of selfishness and pride. By the way, pride is something interesting. Uh, Spirit Emmanuel, in, in one of these great, great, great books, it's called Thought and Life. He, he has a passage which I, I believe it's very strong. I, it's something that we have to, you know, it has to be on our minds all the time. This is what it says. If you think about pride, we carry pride over from one life to another. We keep just carrying them because that's part of who we are until we got rid of it totally. So in our throughout the journey from life to life, from incarnation to incarnation, we take this. If we don't do anything to diminish, to minimize the pride, it will become a snowball. And for most of us, that's what happens because we are at a level of trials and expiations. And Emmanuel says this. If you don't do anything, the snow, snowball starts and it will lead to four things. These are his words, not mine. First, nervous depression. Second, emotional imbalance. Third, ulceration. You see, it's affecting the perispirit and the physical body now. And number four, last one, cellular dysfunction. Cellular dysfunction are degenerative diseases. So the body will support 
all this pride in the form of a physical life and it will damage, if you will, the body. So pride cannot be the, the basis for truth because pride destroys. Truth does not destroy. So we, we kind of have it all reversed. And that's what I'm saying. This is not the truth that Jesus is talking about. I'm going to come back to this. This was about the word truth. About the word knowledge. In our lives, we can understand knowledge in two different ways. There is academic knowledge. That's why we go to school for. That's why we learn different things as young kids, young you know, young boys and girls. And so that's academic knowledge. That's not what Jesus is talking about. That's not what the spirits in question 115 are talking about. It's not academic knowledge. It's spiritual knowledge. It's knowledge that will stick to the soul and pass, carry over from life to life, from incarnation to incarnation. It's knowledge that goes into our hearts when we acquire them and it brings us such an emotional experience that it will be recorded in our parish spirits, in our soul. Academic knowledge does not do that. So the spirits are talking about spiritual knowledge. It's, they are talking about our souls, not about our uh, physical material lives. And the third thing that we need to work on as vocabulary. Okay, so we looked into truth, we looked into knowledge, now we're gonna look into set free. And then we're gonna put it all together. Think about what Jesus said, right? Th th there's a sequence of events. Set free cannot take place before knowing the truth. Set free cannot be placed in front of or before knowing the truth. That's not what he said. He said the other way around. Know the truth and then as a consequence, set free comes in place. This liberating, that's what set free is, right? This idea of liberation, uh, detachment, decoupling, uh, disconnection from whatever it was. And we're going to get there. So if we think that we are free in the sense of I know it all, we got it wrong because we wouldn't have to have full knowledge of the absolutely truth and we don't have that. This is a space and a place for trials and expiations and trials and expiation, expiations meaning we do not have truth in its full extent. No. So set free. Set free from what? Because that, I think for me personally, that was a challenge. Okay, the tr truth will set you free. Okay, but from what? Let's try to explain this. So we're going to open a huge parenthesis here to explain what the set free means. All right, here it goes. We are here because we need to learn from our mistakes. We need to get better. We need to stop doing things that we did in past lives. They are incorrect. We need to learn how to make better choices. So for everything in our lives, we are presented with two choices, a choice that goes against the absolutely truth and the one that goes with it. And I will be making my choices in the past, in the very past, in the first lives close to simple and ignorant. Most of the choices were wrong. We were picking up the wrong side of the equation. As we go along, we get better. So let's just, to make it easier, let's just think, for example, let me use myself as a reference so 
you understand what I'm saying. Let's just say that several lives ago, a hundred lives ago, I was a very dishonest person. And I used to steal and I used to do wrong things and so. And then on the next life, maybe I did a little bit less, but still very dishonest. And then time goes by. I go from life to life, getting better, getting better, getting better. On my past life, the last life, I got tired. I got tired. And I said, no, that's it. No more dishonesty. On my next life, it would be this one. I don't want to be dishonest anymore. It's going to be 100% honesty. And then I go. And I'm born. And I'm going through my life. And everything is going well. And honesty is there 100%. Until one day. Where I go to a place. Could be a party or with some friends. And I find a pile. This high here. A pile of $100 bills. Totally close to, let's say, $10 million. And then I look into that and I say, wow, oh, my God, this is, this is a lot of money. If I, in the pile, if you think about the height, physical height of the pile in, in inches or so, if I take, let's just say, the top 50 bills out of this pile, nobody's going to notice the difference in height. But it's going to make a difference for me in, in what the money means. And then I go through this. Oh, my God. But I came here to be honest. But this pile is there. Oh, my God. I shouldn't do this. But if I do, nobody's going to notice. You see the conflict? It's a, I, Whatever the outcome is, taking the, the money or not, I'm in conflict. Why I'm in conflict? I'm being presented with the two choices. And I know what is the right choice. If I didn't know the right choice, I wouldn't be in conflict. I know the right choice. So why am I going through this? And the answer is because I have not yet transcended the duality. This is a duality. I have not yet transcended the duality, honesty, dishonesty. If I had transcended that duality, I would look at the pile of bills and I would put my two hands on my head and say, oh, my God, somebody lost that money. I need to find who that person is and return the money to that person. No traces of anything even close to being dishonest. But I would have to have transcended that duality. If I have not transcended the duality, how do I know I have not transcended? Because I would be in conflict. Here are my two choices. I have to make one. I want to make this one on the left, but I know the one on the right is correct. The, the correct one. Conflict. And that goes for several dualities. Just another quick example. Alcoholism and sobriety. So same thing. Let's say that 300 lives ago I was uh, alcoholic. You know, to the core and less and less and less and less as I progress in, progress in my subsequential incarnations. And then on the last one, I discarnated and said, no more alcohol. That's it. I can't take this anymore. That's it. So I come to this life here and I'm not going to touch alcohol, for example. Right. So I go and everything is OK and I'm born and I, I, I become a teen and, and I go to parties. And so and then. And then one day in a party, somebody puts right in front of me the most desired bottle of whiskey on the planet, the most expensive and desired bottle of whiskey on the planet. And then I shake to the core. And then I go, oh, my God, this is the best ever uh, drink that I could have. I, maybe I could have just a quick sip, just, to, just, you know, just put my hand in the alcohol and do like this. You see the conflict. It's building up tremendous amount of conflict. And why am I going through this? Because I have not yet transcended the duality, alcoholism, sobriety. If I had transcended that duality, my attitude would be something like this. I look at the bottle and I say, oh, my God, 
this is the most desirable, most expensive drink that we can have in this planet. I should put this away because we have some people here, some colleagues, that if they, if they see this bottle, it's going to be a disaster. Let me put this thing away. It didn't even occur to me to use it for myself. Zero. That would only happen had I transcended the duality, alcoholism and sobriety. And it goes for all dualities. All dualities are vices against virtues. And the, the mechanism is the same for all. So, how do we get out of this? Think about this. While the duality is a fact, meaning I can be right here, honest or dishonest, I'm in conflict. The day that I transcend the duality, dishonesty is no longer a possibility. So there is no duality anymore because I don't have two sides. So the duality no longer exists. It dismantled. So we cannot call that honesty only. We cannot call that duality. We call something different. We call truth. That becomes the truth. And when I get to know that truth, what happens to my conflict? I'm free. He set me free. When I got to know the truth, that dishonesty is not the truth, but honesty is, dishonesty disappears altogether, and there is no duality any longer. There is truth. I want to bring you an idea here. Let's go by analogy because material things are easier to, for us to refer to because we are living uh, temporarily a material life. So let me bring you this idea here. I want to bring you something physical, the sun. We, we don't physically pick up the sun or put our hands on it, but we know it's something physical. It's out there. We have five senses to feel the sun. So... Think about the sun. And I'm going to ask you a question so for you to think about. Five seconds to think about this. What time is it dark at the sun? What time is it dark at the sun? Answer, never. Then next question, why not? Why is it never dark in the sun? Answer, because the sun is the source of all light, all light, not some light, not a few rays here and there, all light. So when am I going to be in peace? When I become the source of all peace. When am I going to be tolerant? When I become the source of all tolerance. When am I going to be honest? When I become the source of all honesty. And on and on and on. So as we go through this process, becoming the source of our virtues, the vices will disappear. The dualities dismantle themselves and the truth comes alive in our hearts. But for now, we still need the dualities because it's necessary until we learn how to make good, cho good choices or right choices once and for all. Every duality reveals a conflict. We need to live above all of this. We need to live above all of this. We need to be the source of all virtues. So every time we are in a conflict, and, and that's the stage that we are. There's nothing wrong with it. That's part of who we are today as spirits, having a, a material life here. We will be presented with choices. And that's the truth that Jesus was talking about. 
gather knowledge and truth will set you free free from what from conflict from everyday difficult situations will we will be living above all of this one layer above all of this thing and that's how spiritism can help us spiritism will bring a new approach to life a new philosophy that teaches the truth by using a moral reference brought by jesus so the words of jesus set a moral reference for a new philosophy of life called spiritism that we can use by the way if you're listening to us right now next week we're going to be here talking about the words of jesus we're going to talk about this topic next week for now let's go back to know the truth and the truth will set you free you see any other form of truth like we said in the beginning personal truth all of those any other form of truth that is not the truth jesus is talking about will make us prisoners any other form of truth will make us prisoners. the only form of truth that will set us free is the absolute truth that he brought to us as as, as a moral reference that we need to learn feel and practice feeling that feeling that truth feeling these experiences is what makes us gather knowledge gathering knowledge i'm this i'm dismantling dualities i'm really progressing towards perfection i'm leaving behind farther and further simple and ignorant i'm walking away from that altogether now, it's a matter of choice it, there's free will here you see I, like paul said i can do everything but not everything is convenient i can do everything yeah i can do a lot of wrong things i can love going through dualities and conflict i'll get tired one day but you know it's my free will and i might love knowing the right choice picking up the wrong one it's free will of course there are consequences because i'm not using the moral reference that sets the truth i'm using a truth that is a moving target when he moves i need to reset my recalculate my route that's what gps does right i have to recalculate my route because my truth the one that i established myself it changed because i learned something more so we are going to be always going after all of this after the truth and in the beginning from simple and ignorance to a certain point it will be a moving target when we understand what it means it's going to be different because i don't want any moving targets anymore i want the truth the absolutely truth truth is not something that we establish but it's something that we subscribe to i don't set the truth i subscribe to it it has been established and news for you and me we didn't establish that that was established by god we subscribe to it or not it's free will i do not establish that so when the highly evolved spirits come to us on question 115 right and they tell us that the knowledge of the truth will lead us to uh, will set us free like jesus has said what they are doing to us is they are paving the way 
for us to take a new route, understand spiritism, and start making better choices, different choices. But you see, making different choices blindly is not what it is. Because I can be in front of the pile of the money, of, of money that I used as an example, and I can go like, hmm, let me ask somebody what I should do here. And yeah, I'll get somebody, uh, look at this pile of money. Do you think I should take 50 bills or should I leave it alone? You see, that answer is not coming from, it's not paving my way. It's not doing anything for me. That's not Jesus because we will not internalize this. We will not uh, uh, bind this to our souls. It's just a passing event in one life. The minute that I can explain to me right there to myself, see, I could take this money, but I'm not taking the money. And I'm not taking the money not because, you know, uh, I'm here right now with a lot of people watching. No, I'm not taking the money because I learned what the actual truth is. And the actual truth is not about the physical bills. It's about honesty. It's about my choice. One interesting thing that I always bring is uh, the story, I'm not going to tell you the whole story, but uh, Nelson Mandela, we most likely we all know what the story is. Nelson Mandela was incarcerated for 27 years, 27 years, for something that at the time when he was arrested first time in 1962, he couldn't even figure out why he was being incarcerated. So he was asking around and no answer. No straight black and white answer. You're being incarcerated because of this, this, this. No. The answer was just shut up. Shut up. Get into your cell. Stay there. A few years later, I think three years later, that's when a formal uh, uh, declaration of why he was being incarcerated came to be known. He was being incarcerated because he was challenging the government because, you know, of the apartheid. He did not support apartheid. Okay, so he spent 27 years in prison. Long time. Long time. When he left prison, can you imagine the day he left prison? The number of people outside, you know, where he was, Journalists, uh, people asking, uh, trying to ask questions, uh, journalists trying to get him to uh, for interviews and television and radio and whatever else you can think of. So he gets out. He looks at all of that. And he says one phrase. He said, the minute I left the prison, I knew I had to leave everything behind everything is not physical is hatred it's uh, anger i knew i had to do everything behind otherwise i would still be imprisoned you see it's not physical if he got out of prison with all this hatred in his heart and this anger and i'm I want revenge and I want justice. He would be still attached to all of that. He will still be suffering. He wouldn't be free because that does not set anybody free. And that goes exactly in line with what Jesus was trying to tell us. The truth that we seek cannot be the truth that we establish. 
every time I establish the truth, and it could be a simple thing. I could just look at somebody and accuse somebody of doing something that they don't even know what I'm talking about. When I do that, I just imprison myself a little longer. It became harder to be set free. That's the power of the truth. And that's behind all of this. That's the power of what Jesus is trying to tell us. When you know the truth, you're going to be free. And my original question in the beginning of my studies, and I mentioned here in the beginning of this lecture, free from what? You see, when we ask, well, or let's speak for myself, when I ask, Free from what? That tells you how blind I am or I was to the actual truth. For example, if you take uh, into the current uh, situation that we are right now in the world, if you take a terrorist, okay, and you ask him for an interview, say, I want to do an interview with you, I want to ask you this. Do you think what you're doing is correct? If you ask him that, he might be offended by your question. He might be offended because for him, that's the absolutely truth. It isn't. But for him, at the stage that he is, it is the absolute truth. So how can you question that? Same for us. We're not perfect. So the truth that we know today, what we consider to be the truth, is just my opinion. If I live my life by saying to myself, I know it all, this is my truth, that tells you how far back I am. When Alan Kardec publishes in the Spirit's book, uh, it starts on about question 100, the spiritist hierarchy. It, it's an interesting thing. He goes to this, he actually negotiates this with the spirits. It's, it's beautiful. He goes to the spirits and he says, listen, in order for me to explain what I need to explain, which is what you're teaching me, and I need to pass it along to my, to, you know, to humanity. In order for me to explain, you would be easier for me, Alan Kardec, right? to categorize the spirits according to their level of development, moral and intellectual development. Can I do that? And the spirits will answer, listen, you can have one, uh, a, a few categories, a million categories. You can give these categories the names that you want. You can group them the way you want as long as the te teachings are preserved. So he does that. He categorizes the spirits according to their level of moral and intellectual development or advancement. He creates 10 categories. So the least advanced one is called the impure spirits. The most advanced one is called the pure spirits. And you have several in between. So the second category, frivolous, is a little more advanced than the first, still in the very beginning of advancement, if you will. And the third category has an interesting name, pseudo-learners. What is that? I know it all. I know it all. I got the truth right here in my heart, and I tell you what the truth is. And you follow the truth because I have it. And if you don't follow, it's going to have, it's going to be a retaliation. It's called personal inquisition. Nothing is further from the truth than what these spirits are telling us the truth is. So, wrapping up, we have a moral reference. How far am I from moral reference let me look into my dualities let me look into my conflicts if a pile of money takes me out of 
shakes my core. That's one of them. If being, you know, with some people that I, I can't take this person, I, I, I don't have patience with this person. I have not yet transcended the duality. Patient, patience, and patience. And so on, and it goes like that, on and on. So spiritism, which is this promised consoler, came to take that simple 10-word phrase from Jesus and bring us all of this thing, all of these layers of knowledge to be acquired about the truth, knowing the truth, and being better people by making better choices. Thank you so much for following us, for being with us, and uh, we will be here for any possible questions. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Louise. Thank you for the reflections you provided. Indeed, what a great and inspirational lecture or discussion to understand Jesus, right? And it's a simple one sentence, and we spent what? 45 minutes, almost 50 minutes uh, dissecting it. I loved it every moment. Uh, but it's time. We still have time, as I said before, for us to go over the audience comments and or questions. So let's see what we have here, Louise. Okay. So the first one is from Kirsten. Hi, Kirsten. Uh, Kirsten said, Louise, we live in a society where personal truths run agendas. How can we get more connected to Jesus' truth instead of being clouded by our own? Yeah, I think, first of all, uh, uh, understanding what he meant by truth. Uh, that's not moving target. It's, it's the absolutely truth. And for us, spiritists, the more you study, I think the more uh, it becomes clear, less clouded, as you said, that we get to a point where it, it's a two-step thing, I think, two-layer thing. First step is I have these two choices, and I know which one is right, which one is wrong. That's already good. When, when I reach that level one, that's already a good thing. I can still continue to make the wrong choices. That's okay. We'll, yeah, the right choice will come with time. But I can still look at this from outside the box and say, I got this and I got that. I still, I, I know I'm going to make the wrong choice. I'm still not able to do the right choice. But I know now. It, it, this is knowledge. I know. See, it's knowledge. Knowledge comes like in the beginning, little by little. Right? So that's the first step, baby steps for knowledge. There's going to be a point where we are going to get tired of knowing the right and the wrong choice and making the wrong choice. Because now we have uh, uh, the rationales to look at this and say, my God, I made the wrong choice, but, but I had everything to make the right choice. You see, that's why intellectual progress comes before moral. Because with intellectual development, I have the reasonable sense to analyze that I made a wrong choice, but I didn't have to. So next time I can be making a better choice and that's how we are we are going to start slowly and progressively walking away from our clouded personal choice we have thank to you. know the target yeah yeah no this is awesome thank you louise so let's see if we have another question and kristen follows up with also it seems we're trying to live love it our own truth right the, the whole uh, absolute versus relative truth how can we not impede in someone else's truth whilst stand, wanting to share or live Jesus' message? Really, really interesting question, huh, Louise? Okay. Uh, well, think about this, for example. Think about email. Okay? We, we all get a lot of junk email. We all get a lot of junk email. And what happens? We look at our inbox and we say, oh, my God, I, ha I received, I don't know, 100 emails today, 98 are junk mail. What can you do? 
you cannot go back to these 98 people and forbid them to send you emails. You don't have the power. It's not going to happen. You have to deal with it once it reaches your inbox. You can deal with that by revolting, saying names, getting angry, uh, going against the person next to you that has nothing to do with this. Or you can just say, oh, my God, these people have not learned yet. Let me delete this thing. It has to do with how I perceive. And it's different for every one of us. We are all in different stages of evolution. Uh, how I perceive is what's going to make me closer or further from the actual truth. I cannot be angry at somebody because they are right on my side due to something that somebody else on the other side of the planet did. You see, when I... If I turn on the news and I see wars and people dying and I get revolt about it, you see, the people in my family around me are not the ones I have to listen. I have to deal with this with a different perspective. Again, my perspective will change with time because my personal tr truth will change to one point where it will no longer change. Whatever happens, I live above that now. So whatever comes in is not going to affect me. And we have examples of that. Jesus is one of them. But we have more recent examples such as Chico Xavier, Mother Teresa, Divaldo Franco, and so many people. Gandhi, right? Whatever was around them, they were living above it. It wouldn't matter to them. So... Yeah, I think somehow you talked about uh, or glimpsed into those 10 categories of spirits. I know they're artificial categories so we can understand. And we keep moving, right, from impure all the way to that pure spirit, a, a Christ-like uh, type of spirit that is living that, uh, that uh, absolute truth. But uh, our progress is a journey, right? Let us, let us all transcend those dualities. But let's see if we have another question, Louise. Okay. I don't know if we have another question. I guess we don't. Oh, there we go. Um, so Daniel, Daniel, hi, Daniel. Daniel is asking us, uh, hi, Louise. Can you elaborate on your definition of transcend? transcend. And I, I, I know you use that a lot. Uh, and uh, I loved it, actually, Louise, that you use that uh, to, to discuss uh, different concepts. But the, the idea of transcend is really key in, in better understanding. So great, great question, Daniel. Thanks, Daniel. Uh, yeah, transcend means leave behind i passed something mm -hmm. and this is behind this is, uh, is not i'm look. i'm not looking back mm -hmm. i have conquered i have reached a certain milestone and the milestones prior to those they were part of the past i have transcended them so i have been uh, when i say i have transcended this duality means i was able to live above that that no longer exists, no longer part of my life. That's the sense behind transcend. May I add something, Louise, uh, yep. if you don't mind? I, I just keep, when you, when you first talked about it, the notion of transcending the duality, and of course you used uh, very material, right? Vices, uh, addictions, etc. cetera. So mm -hmm. it's very easy for us to understand. The word that came to mind was overcoming. Right. A challenge, right? And uh, but uh, when you put into the transcendence, is really uh, getting to a stage that that whatever that may be, material, spiritual, moral dilemma, whatever the conflict within, no longer has a hold on us. We are are above. So yeah, I love what uh, really, you said. really great. Mm -hmm. I love what you said. Overcome, but you see, yeah. that's interesting. Overcome means it still exists. And I have to pass over it. Yes. 
yes. transcend that does no longer exist. Yes. Awesome. 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 Thank you. Let's see if we have another question. I believe we may. Okay. Hey, Yasko. Yasko Arakava has sent another one and she says, hi, Louise. Great topic. I agree, Yasko. Mm -hmm. Isn't it better for progress to have some personal truth, even to last shortly? So while living according to that, we have the opportunity to test it and find out if it has some fraud at the knowledge. So really interesting, the, the, a, a little bit of dichotomy. It's mm -hmm. my truth, flawed as it may be, right, Yasko? But uh, how can we keep adding and learning from it? What do you think, Luis? How can you talk about, uh, about this question? Yeah, uh, Yasko, thanks for the question. That's exactly what it is. Our personal truth is, uh, like I said, we are at the best life ever. So we right now, this second, is where we were able to collect or gather the most possible amount of knowledge right now. And yes, I will add more knowledge as I go along. So my personal truth is going gonna, is gonna to change and approach. Now one day is going to approach the absolute truth. Yeah, that's how we get there, by adding to our personal truth. And that's why I say the personal truth is a moving target. Mm -hmm. It will not be the same three lives from now. You will not be the same 50 lives from now. So, yes, we by adding more knowledge to our personal truth, that's how we uh, in, uh, get enlightened. That's what the question 115 says, right? The mission of the spirits is to get enlightened. That's how we do it. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. So let's uh, see if we have another one. We are approaching the, the you know, we just uh, hit the hour mark. So let's see how many more we have. Freddie, hi, Freddie. Freddie said, what was the reason Jesus was sacrificed? Oh, good, big one, right? Because he had the real truth. So I don't know if you want to speak to that. Uh, uh, how can we uh, discuss the, the trait of the, not the trigger but uh, the reason behind mm -hmm. in, in how it relates to the idea of truth okay uh this is i'm gonna respond this way if you can leave the question please uh on on the screen so the second part is because he had the real truth that's a fact he had the real truth why he was uh, sacrificed because we didn't have the real truth ah we had personal truth in the Sanhedrin, in the Roman Empire, all of us, whoever was in there, we did not have the real truth. Our truth at the moment was the best we ever had for the time, mm -hmm. but it was very, 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 very far from the absolutely real, as you say, truth. So why did he got sacrificed? Because we didn't have the real truth. We established the absolutely truth we stamped the absolute truth with our personal truth that said, put him on the cross. Yeah, it's very interesting, right, uh, Luis? Uh, uh, how uh, Freddie put it in. So I love, I love the question. Thank you so much, Freddie. Um, how can we do this? You know, how, how do we do this to ourselves today? Not to Jesus, but, uh, you know, some other opportunity to sacrifice other truth, the absolute truth without truths. Yeah. But pa Patricia the Hoyos, hi, Patricia. Uh, she's saying, Louise, our moral weakness might be the ones that hold us from really understanding or embracing the universal truth that our blessed doctrine revealed to us so as our master in his parable. So it's a question, and I did not make it into a question. So my apologies, Patricia. So she's asking, mm -hmm. is, is our more weakness is holding us from those uh, the truths revealed to us? Yeah. Hi, Patricia. Nice to see you here again. Uh, yeah, the, the more weakness is exactly the reason our, our level of advancement, moral and intellectual, by the way, it's a combination of both. Our level of advancement does not yet approach perfection. So certain things that we look at, certain situations that we look at, makes us keep 
uh, uh, producing or, or, or uh, the outcome are wrong choices. We still do this. We still do a, uh, a lot of our outcome in our decisions are wrong. And they are wrong because, you know, we are in stages that we, we are at a lower stage in comparison to perfection. But yeah, it is moral weakness. Thank you. Thank you, Patricia. And, and thank you, Luis. Let's see. I think we have a, a, a time for a couple more. Hey, Kirsten. Kirsten said, uh, we live in a very repressive society. Luis, do you think we the best way to fix the duality is to deny the part of us that want us? I think she was talking about the, the money, right, yeah. to the wallet. Uh, that the, the, Is it... The, The way to fix is just to deny the, the desire, the will, the wish to take the money. What are your thoughts? All right. I'm going to ask you to leave the question, please, again. We live in a very uh, repressive... Oh, no, 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 no. Leave the question on the screen. Oh, leave the question, not read the question. No, okay. okay. Yes. So I'm going to respond as a physical quantum scientist would. Okay? Don't get scared. <laughs> Seriously. Bring it on, bring uh, it on. Yeah. Fix the duality is to deny the part of us that wants to take the money. If there's a part in us to take the money, the duality is still, still there. We have not transcended. It's We are the observer. We are imposing our truth on the situation. Our truth is, I could take the money or I could not. So, regardless if the society is repressive because we had people living in repressive societies with us like Gandhi and Mother Teresa and so these people were persecuted you know they were under tremendous repressive uh, 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 situations and it didn't affect them at all because there was no part in them that wanted to take the money If there is a part in us that wants to take the money, we will feel the repression. But it's not from the society. It's from within. The conflict is internal. You see, it's, it's like a don't blame who sent the junk mail. It's, there's no point. Deal with that. So it's the same thing here. If we have this in us, It's internal conflict. It's not the society. So to quote uh, Joanna DeAngelis, right, Kirsten, and I'm sure she she's agreeing with me here. Uh, it's it's part of the, our existential conflicts, and we need to 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 manage them until they're no longer there. Right. So thank you, thank you, Kirsten, for the for the uh, question. Let's uh, do one more before we we say goodbye. And um, the United States Spirit Federation sent this. Uh, thank you, Luis, for connecting this teaching with the concept of our world of uh, trials and expiations. Can you discuss the notion of being set free from the perspective of the law of cause and effect? Yes. Uh, every time we make wrong choices, meaning we're not set free yet, every time we go through a conflict, and we make the wrong choice, I'm causing something else that's going to show up ahead on my journey. That's a law of cause and effect. So the more I don't do the right choices, the more problems I'm going to have to deal with. I'm going to have to offset everything that I'm doing now. So a wrong choice today will be uh, creating something in my future somehow that I'm going to have to offset. And every time I have to offset something, I'm spending energy, sometimes vital fluid, you know, instead of using that in my own good purpose to deal with things in the past that I could have avoided. And uh, when I mean vital fluid is sometimes things don't turn the way we want because it's an effect of a cause in the past. And we get so aggravated, so mad, so this and that, that we pay with our vital fluid, with a physical body. And then, you know, degenerative diseases and all these things, heart conditions, whatever it is, they show up in our bodies. That's just 
effect of a cause that we created by making wrong choices in the past because we didn't know the truth. Yes. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. I think uh, you did beautifully in those, uh, not only your, your, your discussion, right, but also the Q&A and how you weaved all those concepts together. So lovely, 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 uh, Louise. Thank you so much. You. I want to thank you, Louise, and everyone else who was here, you know, who, anyone who is here today to watch this uh, talk live. Uh, those also who've been here following this uh, series of Spiritist Talk, uh, just remember next week, next Saturday, May 28th at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Uh, don't miss uh, this, uh, this uh, opportunity to hear to continue this discussion, right, uh, Louise? Louise yeah. will become, um, will return to us to talk the words of Jesus. He mentioned that before, and he will have a whole hour and plus minutes to, to, to really you know, get get uh, this sense of uh, amazing uh, knowledge that you brought to us. Um, as we're here and we're about to end our life today, I would like to just take a moment to remind everyone again that uh, the Spiritist uh, Federation has released the virtual uh, course uh, initiation into Spiritism. As I mentioned before, it is delivered weekly free of charge, and the course is meant for anyone who would like to learn uh, or review the basic principles of spiritism. It is a self-paced 30 lessons and eight interactive Q&A sessions, and uh, they are released Sunday. So tomorrow, 10 a.m., a new lesson will be released. Thank you so much. Thank you for uh, those who are uh, able to watch this class, this course. And uh, if you want more information, go to the U.S. Spiritist Federation website, as you can see on the screen, www.spiritist.us to get more information or receive reminders. Tomorrow, uh, live at 10 a.m., the main focus of the discussion will be trials and atonements so uh, uh the, as we just finished our last question right we we can uh, dive in uh, further into that if you have the time uh or you can watch it later please don't miss it louise before we close the live today would you mind saying a prayer for all of us sure absolutely yeah. thank you let's concentrate on the image of Jesus. Let's open our hearts and minds to all the influx of good energy that comes from the high realm. Let's just imagine that we are set free, flying high, looking at the universe, looking at the world, all in peace. Every single planet, every single star and light in its place. When you look around, everything is as it should be. No conflicts, no problems. Everything aligned and in being entering our hearts, this peace, this enormous sense of peace invading our minds and hearts. That this influx of energy can give us the strength to make better choices, to understand what the choices are and to make the right choices that our mentors and guides, our guardian angels and Jesus can be looking over us all the time, guiding us over the journey for those who are in prisons. We ask Jesus that can they can be 
receiving all this energy so can understand and accept their situation because of the choices they made. And that from now on, they will make better choices. Same for those in hospitals suffering due to these hard diseases on us, these illnesses, this, this suffering. Again, that we, these people, these incarnated spirits can all understand why they are facing this. They can accept. And from then on, they will make better choices. Thank you, Jesus, for the opportunity to be here, sharing our hearts with you, and that we can all go in peace. Have a great weekend and a great week all together. Thank you, Jesus, so very much. So be it. Thanks, everyone.